Hi, this is Mike Collinson here. Uh, in the past, I've made several videos on uh, hydraulic ram pumps. And uh, today I'd like to have a, a chat about the uh, about one of the most important parts of it, which is the pressure tank. Um, but I'm, going to, I'm going to be doing this in association with a, a good friend of mine, Seth Johnson from North Carolina. Uh, he, uh, he's got a channel on here called Land to House, and I'll, I'll come back to that later, but uh, he's a... Uh, He's a really interesting guy with lots of lots of good um, videos, so I thoroughly recommend that you subscribe to him. Anyway, here goes. I want to, as I say, there's a few things I want to chat about uh, about ram pump, about the uh, pressure tanks. The pressure tank is uh, is basically uh, an air, just an airtight container, uh, and when water's forced into it, the uh, the water actually compresses the air inside the container. And uh, that gives the extra pressure to push it back up through the, uh, the outlet pipe. Now the problem is that um, if you just had a, a container with uh, nothing in it but air, over a period of time the air gets absorbed into the water and the whole thing becomes waterlogged. So what we have to do is to find a, find a way of, um, of overcoming this so that the, uh, the air doesn't get waterlogged and uh, the tank doesn't get waterlogged. Otherwise, you'd have to keep on emptying it out and uh, dismantling it. There are several ways of getting over this. Uh, one of the ways is to, pre is to put in a, what they call a slifter valve. Uh, it's a small hole that's uh, made into the, uh, into the, generally in the T-junction beneath the pressure tank. And, and what this does is to gulp in a bit of air um, every time that uh, the, the pump action uh, to prevent the uh, the tank from getting waterlogged. However, this is not uh, not something that I've um, I've undertaken, and uh, I think people have various degrees of success with this uh, due to getting the the size of the hole right in in comparison to the 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 size of the tank, etc. So I'm going to show you a couple of other ways. First, I'm going to hand you over to my good friend Seth Johnson. Uh, Seth is going to show you how he makes up his ram pumps. Uh, he also has these for sale on his site uh, at a very competitive price. So if you're if you're based in North America and uh, you're after one of these, um, you could do do very well by contacting him. Anyway, here you go, Seth. I'll pass you over. Hi, Mike. Thanks for the opportunity to collaborate. I really do appreciate it. If you don't know Mike, I definitely would uh, recommend subscribing to his channel. He and I have been friends now for several years. And let me tell you, he is a wealth of information, from gardening to construction and a whole lot more. So do subscribe. Now, uh, he and I are working on this video about ram pump pressure tanks. So let me show you how I assemble a tank and uh, then I'll give you some good information about it. So let's jump in here. Only a few items are required to make a pressure tank. I'm going to be assembling a tank for a one and a quarter inch ram pump. So I've got a four inch PVC pipe cut to 17 inches. I've got a coupling that's slip on both sides. I've got a cap, which is slip. And then I've got this reducer, which goes from four inch slip to one and a quarter threaded there. Also need some cement. Now this tank will operate without a um, inner tube or foam inside, but over time as um, the pump operates, water will start to seep up the pressure tank. And so I like to use a rubber inner tube partially filled with air so that even if water starts to seep up in the tank, this will prevent it from becoming totally waterlogged and the pump will still operate. So we'll get to that in just a bit. Typically, I start with the inner tube. Just remove this cap and then put some air in here. Now, I've had questions from people saying, how much air should I put in this tube? Just make sure that it's full, but not so full that you can't uh, bend it in half. Um, because this has to go into the tank and if it's too full, it won't fit in there. So let me show you here. That right there is plenty because whenever I uh, get it in the tank here, I'm gonna fold it in half up here 
and then fold it a half in half again right here so that it will fit inside this pipe. So you can see where if it was too full, that wouldn't happen. Next, I'm gonna use cement to get these two pieces together. Now, some people have successfully used threaded pipes for this, but I find that they leak. And uh, if you've ever used a ram pump, you know that leaks will definitely stop the pump in a hurry. So I do recommend using the slip ends. There's the first one. So next, I'm going to get the tank attached to this part. So all of this is really the same. You just use the cement and get it uh, coated really nice and thick in there. And when you're using this kind of cement, be sure to put it on both pieces that are gonna be attached together because it does make a difference. You can also give it a little twist to lock it into place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the cap put on here, just like the other pieces. Now, this is a four inch pipe for the one and a quarter inch ram pump. The reason it's this big is because there's gonna be um, a lot more water being pushed through this system than the smaller pumps. I'm just pushing the cap on here real quick, like that. As the pump size gets smaller, you can reduce the size of your pressure tank. Uh, for instance, the half inch pump that I use, I have a two inch pipe that is only uh, about 18, 15 to 18 inches tall. Um, so you can kind of vary that a little bit. If you go too small, the uh, pump will not be able to build up the pressure it needs. And too big, it just takes longer for that initial pressure to build. So it's better to err on the larger side than on the smaller side. Because I do sell ram pumps, to put this Land of House sticker on there. And that concludes how I assemble a PVC pressure tank for a hydraulic ram pump. I do hope it helps. And uh, back to you, Mike. Thanks for that, Seth. That was very interesting. Very well explained as well. I've actually used a slightly different approach in that I bought in a, a tank, an expansion tank that's used uh, in central heating systems. Uh, and this contains its own, uh, its own rubber bladder uh, that, that does the same, the same thing as Seth's uh, system. It, um, it separates the... Uh, uh, the inside of the tank uh, with a sealed air compartment uh, which compresses uh, and forms the expansion for the uh, for the water. The tank actually has a valve on the top of it uh, which enables you to attach an airline or a, a bicycle pump to uh, to reinflate or to increase the pressure on the uh, on the bladder. You can see it clearly uh, pumping away nicely. I think there are slight pros and cons with uh, both systems. Uh, uh, with the one I use, uh, the advantage is that you can actually uh, attach a, an air hose to the top to reinflate the bladder. Um, the disadvantage is, the, uh, is the, the extra cost of it because it is more expensive. And also, if it ever went wrong, uh, it would be a case of throwing it away and buying a new one. Um, the uh, slight disadvantage with um, with Seth's uh, system is that um, it's uh, the, the once the uh, the tire um, inner tube is put inside, uh, that's it. Um, there's no way of uh, adjusting the air in it. Um, but of course, if it, that ever went wrong, it would be quite feasible to to cut the tube in half, uh, put a new uh, an acetate tube. I mean, put a new tube inside it, and um, uh, put a connector and you'll be back up and running again. Uh, so in all, I think that, um, that both systems are very comparable indeed. They both do an excellent job. Um, and uh, I think uh, anybody would be, would be happy using either. 
Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you have, um, please uh, please take a moment to go over to Seth's site and have a look at his uh, his videos. He has a whole series of videos on on a variety of different things. Uh, I'm going to put a link down in the um, description below uh, to access it and also to his uh, to his website, which again is very interesting. And uh, please take a moment and uh, give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you've enjoyed this, uh, also take a moment and think about subscribing. So we'll see you all again. Bye-bye.